This is 7 News. Tonight, terror in the sky. A Malaysia Airlines plane shot out of the sky, killing 298 people. Among the seven West Australians on board, a businessman and his three grandchildren. My heart is with my sister. And with her husband. The Prime Minister vows to find justice for victims and their loved ones. This looks less like an accident than a crime. From the studios of Seven Perth, Rick Arden. Good evening. Families of 28 Australians are grappling with unimaginable grief tonight after the downing of a Malaysia Airlines passenger jet in what's widely being called a terror attack. MH17 was flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur when a Russian-made missile blew the plane apart over eastern Ukraine. What we know so far, 298 people were on board, 15 crew, 283 passengers. None survived. 28 Australians have been killed, seven from WA, including a Perth businessman and three of his grandchildren. Ukraine's president has blamed Russian-backed rebels. Prime Minister Tony Abbott says we owe it to the dead Australians to bring the perpetrators to justice. Tonight's 7 News has comprehensive coverage from around the world. Hugh Whitfeld is standing by in Ukraine. Jeff Parry is in Kuala Lumpur. We begin in Ukraine at the crash site. A fireball kilometres away, then a plume of black smoke and panic. <laughs> it was the moment MH17, with 298 people aboard, plunged into farmland in eastern Ukraine. The Boeing 777 had been cruising at 1,000 kilometres an hour, 10 kilometres up. This, it seems, was the result of a Russian surface-to-air missile. Debris was scattered for about 20 kilometres near Ukraine's border with Russia, a flashpoint for months. The shooting was pretty, pretty intense before that. I, I heard a lot of noise in the sky and then I heard several shots, then a strong bang. Malaysia Airlines markings were prominent. Parts of the fuselage, the wheel bay, the promise of a holiday. Almost everything charred and among the passports retrieved, the unmistakable navy blue of Australia, one of many. 154 Dutch passengers were on board the aircraft, 27 Australian passengers, 23 Malaysian. 28 Australian victims were confirmed, seven from WA, including Perth management consultant Nick Norris and his three grandchildren. Just gentle, clever, Amazing. beautiful kids. Melbourne University student Elaine Teo, nine Victorians, at least nine Queenslanders. Also passengers from Indonesia, Great Britain, Germany, Belgium, the Philippines, Canada. Many on their way to an AIDS conference in Melbourne. From Ukraine's Prime Minister... Today the war has gone beyond the territory of Ukraine. The consequences of this war have caught up with the whole world. And the whole world, it seems, is horrified. The trampling of justice and decency in the pursuit of national aggrandizement and reckless indifference to human life should have no place in our world. Yeah. This is a violation of the rules of civilization. It is a tyrannical, wild act. The aircraft was a code share with Dutch airline KLM. It was targeted mid-air close to its cruising altitude. It was about two hours into its flight from Amsterdam when air traffic controllers lost contact. There was no distress call. Malaysia's Prime Minister had already shouldered so much of the burden from missing flight MH370. We insist that the perpetrators must swiftly be brought to justice. Outside the Dutch embassy in Ukraine's capital, Kiev, there was a mountain of flowers. Some airlines, including Delta in the US, avoided eastern Ukraine, but there was no standing order. With unprecedented speed, within hours of the crash, in fact, the world was given a first-hand account of how this calamity unfolded, a devastating initial blow in an escalating diplomatic war. Ukrainian intelligence released audio it claims to have intercepted between a pro-Russian separatist and a Russian intelligence officer. This is that recording. <laughs>
the separatists realize it's a civilian plane. Then another call involving separatist commander Nikolai Kozitsyn. Это оказался пассажирский. Упал в районе Грабова. Там море трупов, женщины, дети. Сейчас казаки там смотрят это все дело. Пять телевизоров передают, вроде бы как этот Ан-26 украинский транспортник. Но говорят, написано на нем малазийские авиалинии. И что он делал на территории Украины? Ну, значит, завозили шпионов, не знаю. Понял? Не понимаю, сейчас война идет, блядь. Russia says suggestions it is somehow involved are stupid. The state over which territory it happened, says Vladimir Putin, is responsible for this terrible tragedy. There are claims the pro-Russian separatists accused of shooting down MH17 have retrieved the plane's black boxes and handed them to Moscow, igniting fears an independent forensic investigation will be compromised. Robert Avadia, 7 News. One Perth family is coming to terms with the loss of four loved ones. 68-year-old Nick Norris and his three young grandchildren. With exclusive details, here's Today Tonight's Tina Altieri. Thanks, Rick. Yes, Nick Norris was flying home to Perth with his three grandchildren while their parents holidayed in Amsterdam. Here in Perth, Natalia Gemmel has lost her father, her niece and two nephews. In this exclusive interview with Mark Gibson, she pays tribute to her sister's three children and reveals the final words she said to her father. I spoke to him just before he caught the plane to find out when he was leaving. and. Um, told him I loved him and told him I'd see him when he got back. Natalia Gemmel is speaking about her father, 68-year-old Nick Norris, one of 28 Australians who didn't make it home. In my mind, he was a very great man. He has been a uh, Lieutenant Colonel in the Army Reserves. Um, he's been a headmaster, he's been a consultant. Uh, with Indigenous people, with education, and he has done his bit to change his part of the world. Nick Norris was flying home with his grandchildren, 12-year-old Mo, 10-year-old Evie, and 8-year-old Otis. Beautiful, beautiful kids. Just gentle, clever, Amazing. beautiful kids. The children's parents, Rin and Anthony Maslin, were staying in Amsterdam a few more days. Dad had flown my sister's kids to Amsterdam to have a holiday um, with my sister and her husband, and um, they were flying back. Um, my sister and her husband are still in Amsterdam. The kids were flying home on today. Natalia received the dreadful news early this morning. They confirmed that my dad and my niece and two nephews were on the plane. It was unfathom unfathomable. I can't even say the word. It was... There was nothing. Before boarding the plane, Nick Norris joked about flying Malaysia Airlines, referring to the plane that went missing four months ago, never dreaming this Boeing 777 would also perish. My father was in the army. Uh, my father uh, was in wars for my father to be shot down in a war that wasn't his, there's something pertinent about it. To lose three beautiful children, <laughs> children. in a war that isn't theirs, it's different. Anything that leads to innocent 
children being shot out of the sky is not where we should be heading. Last time I saw Mick, he shook my hand and he said, it's good to see you, son. And that was my second dad. Seven West Australians are among the 298 victims of a civil war on the other side of the world. My heart is with my sister. And with her husband. And the love that I have for them and for all my family and all the other families that are affected. And the only thing that I'm pleased about is that they were all together and they were, would, have been an, would have been instant. Natalia and her husband John, who have two children of their own, have a message for all families. Love every single minute that you have with your children. Every single minute. Love every single minute you have with your family. Mark Gibson with that exclusive interview. And the parents of the three children, Rin and Anthony Maslin, are due to fly home from Amsterdam over the next few days. Rick. Thanks, Tina. Nick Norris and his grandchildren were flying back to Perth after holidaying in the Netherlands. As we've heard, 28 Australians were killed, many of them on an overseas vacation that turned to disaster. We're now hearing the names and seeing the faces of those whose lives were so cruelly ended, including grandparents from WA's Great Southern. Yvonne and Arjen Ryder lived in Albany, a newly renovated home close to their children and grandchildren. They'd been in Holland visiting friends and were on their way home when tragedy struck. For the past 30 years, sister Philomena Tiernan has provided guidance to the girls at the Kin Koppel School in Sydney. Today they were left shattered as they learnt the 71-year-old had been on board the doomed flight. She's been a great mentor and she's also a personal friend. So. We're just devastated. The shock has been incredible. Albert and Marie Risk from Victoria had spent the past month enjoying the holiday of a lifetime. You know, he's a funny man, Albert. You had to know him. To, you had to know him. Sorry. You had to know him to appreciate. Very hard. Very hard. More than a hundred of those on board were coming to Australia for an international AIDS conference, among them world-leading researcher Yope Lunga. The HIV AIDS movement has truly lost a giant. For Brisbane woman Kayleen Mann, an unthinkable tragedy has struck twice. She lost her brother Rod Burrows and his wife Mary aboard flight MH370. Today, confirmation her stepdaughter was killed in today's MH17 disaster. While it's now confirmed seven West Australians died in this tragedy, we're being warned that number could rise. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade is still trying to determine the nationalities of a number of people on board. Colleagues of Rockingham man Nick Norris today wanted his legacy to be remembered. But I used to watch and think, if my kids think about me when I go, like those people think about Nick, I'll have done all right. In a prophetic post online, a Dutchman took a photo of the plane and uploaded it with the caption, this is what it looks like in case it goes down. The photo has now been shared thousands of times. Amelia Brune, 7 News. Our Europe correspondent Hugh Whitfeld is with us in Ukraine's capital, Kiev. Hugh, this tragedy has been condemned right around the world. What's happening there today? Well, Rick, we know emergency services are at the crash scene. They are picking through debris which stretches for 15 square kilometres. The rebels who are in control of that part of the country have agreed to permit an, inter uh, an international humanitarian corridor around the scene. That, it is hoped, will allow independent investigators in to get in there and try and work out what happened. And Hugh, what do we know tonight? What's the latest on exactly who's responsible? 
Well, tonight, Rick, we actually have a key suspect. He is a former Russian intelligence officer. His name is Igor Gherkin. He has two pseudonyms. Uh, he is also known as Strelkov or the Shooter. Now, he is believed to have boasted on social media that it was his men who shot down a Ukrainian plane about the same time that MH17 came down. He wrote online, we did warn you, do not fly in our sky. Pretty scary stuff. And finally, Hugh, what's been the reaction from the Ukrainian president tonight? Yeah, Petro Poroshenko, he is the relatively new president here. He has condemned uh, this awful disaster. He says it is an act of terrorism and he blames the pro-Russian militants in the eastern part of Ukraine who are aligned with Russia, but they say they are not responsible. Now, the United Nations will meet in the next few hours. They are trying to work out an initial official response and then try to work out what to do next. Rick. OK, thanks, Hugh. From Ukraine, let's go live now to Malaysia and 7 News senior correspondent Jeff Parry. Jeff, it's hard to believe this has happened just four months after the tragedy of MH370. Uh, exactly, and, and the mood up here is, well, pick your, you know, take your pick. It's shock, sombre, anger. All of those scenes have been played out. It was only on March 8th, of course, that uh, MH370 dropped off the radar on a flight from uh, KL to Beijing. Uh, they still don't know where that is or the fate of the passengers. But uh, th this one, of course, they do know. It was shot down over Ukraine. And, uh, of course, this, this anger over that, this consternation. Uh, there were people at the airport today who were uh, trying to find out uh, uh, who was on the manifest, trying to find out uh, the information on their loved ones. So it's, it's all mixed up. And, of course, this is the second time it's their national carrier, of course. The Malaysia, Malaysian Airlines have lost two planes. March 8th and now today and uh, they're now talking about the, you know what's the future of their airline um, but what's the future too for all the people you know who, who, are, who are left behind mourning their relatives the transport minister today held a press conference just a couple of hours ago Rick he said that that it was flying the correct route it was it was an approved route other airlines particularly European airlines flew that route so it wasn't doing anything uh, out of the ordinary uh, and yet it's it's come to grief back to you Thanks, Jeff. Jeff Parry in Kuala Lumpur. As the news of MH17 spread across Perth this morning, there were nervous scenes at Perth International Airport. TVs showing pictures of the crash were turned off inside terminals to try to ease passengers' anxiety. Rebecca O'Donovan has this report. At Perth International Airport this morning, the news was sinking in. I think it's devastating. You know, it's crazy what people do. As families welcomed loved ones through the gates, relieved to have them home safe. He's come from Europe and then and you just think, you know, it could be you and you... I don't know, it's just tragic. That such a catastrophe could strike a Malaysian Airlines flight again is almost incomprehensible for Danica Weeks, who lost her husband Paul on flight MH370 in March. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy and I could never live myself if this happened to another family and look it's just gone and happened. We need to know why and I just hope Malaysia um, are more forthcoming with the families. If the rebels are responsible and it appears that they are responsible uh, then they'll be doing their damnedest to um, hide or take away this material and uh, we'll be left with nothing. While some passengers here today have vowed never to fly Malaysian Airlines again, others weren't deterred lining up to board flight MH124 bound for Kuala Lumpur this afternoon. Malaysian Airlines announced today passengers who wish to postpone or cancel their travel plans can obtain a refund, including non-refundable tickets. This applies from now until July 24. There are other flight options available from Europe to Perth tomorrow. The cheapest Qatar Airways via Doha at just over $3,000 one way. Rebecca O'Donovan, 7 News. The ill-fated MH17 had a connecting flight to Perth. Kate Smithers is at Perth Airport tonight. Kate, after several delays, has MH125 finally arrived? 
Rick, it has. It landed here at Perth Airport just 10 minutes ago. Now, that flight was supposed to be a connecting flight home to Perth for some of the passengers on board that ill-fated flight. It was supposed to leave Kuala Lumpur at 9.30 this morning, just three hours after MH17 was due to land there. We were told it was delayed a couple of times. It was due to land at 3 p.m., then 5.30, but as I said, it has landed here about 10 minutes ago. Now, that flight will turn around, go back to KL. There are some Perth passengers on board that flight. Now, interestingly, there were some televisions showing the news of MH17 down here at the airport earlier today, but airport staff switched off those screens as they didn't want to cause distress among passengers. As you can understand, passengers down here are on edge about what's happened and have told me they simply feel sick about it. Rick, we will bring you those details when MH125 passengers eventually disembark. Thanks, Kate. Prime Minister Tony Abbott has told Parliament this is a grim day for Australia and the world. He's vowed to pursue justice for those who were killed and for their families. Hauled in for a diplomatic dressing down, the Russian ambassador finds himself in the flash of the international spotlight. Summoned to the government offices in Sydney to meet Foreign Minister Julie Bishop. Did he deny Russian involvement, Foreign Minister? Yes. That brought a slap down from the Prime Minister. The initial response of the Russian ambassador was to blame Ukraine for this. And I have to say that is deeply, deeply unsatisfactory. After an urgent meeting of Cabinet's National Security Committee, briefed by Defence Force Chief Mark Binskin and ASIO Head David Irvine, and phone calls with world leaders, Mr Abbott had formed his own view. I mean, these were innocent people uh, going about their lives and they have been wantonly killed uh, by uh, Russian-backed rebels. And this is uh, not an accident, it's a crime. Talking tough with this pointed warning to Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Australia takes a very dim view of countries which are facilitating uh, the killing of Australian citizens. We take a very dim view of this. This is a tyrannical wild act and it does deserve strong response. Ms Bishop told the Russian ambassador Australia expected his country's support for a United Nations Security Council resolution tonight for a full independent investigation and a ceasefire so the bodies can be retrieved. And he assured me that Russia would do what it could to find those responsible. Tony Abbott warned Russia not to stand in the way of an independent investigation as he weighs up whether to ban Vladimir Putin from November's G20 meeting in Brisbane or ask him to come along so world leaders can look the Russian president in the eye and tell him what they really think. A test for Russia and Tony Abbott knows a test too for him. Mark Riley, Seven News. Flight MH17 was two hours and 15 minutes into its journey when intelligence agencies say it was shot out of the sky. The Malaysian airliner was brought down by a Soviet-developed anti-aircraft missile launcher being operated by separatist rebels. The missile system suspected of bringing down the Malaysia Airlines jet is known as Buk in Russia. NATO refers to it as Gadfly, a warhead developed during the Soviet era to shoot other missiles, smart bombs and aircraft out of the sky. The book is a medium-range surface-to-air missile five and a half metres long. It's guided by radar to its target up to 25 kilometres away and travels at three times the speed of sound, about a kilometre per second. MH17 was flying at the normal cruising altitude of around 10,000 metres when it was hit well within the missile's range. It's a very soft target for something like this. It's not designed to withstand any kind of ground fire, let alone a half-ton missile. Only highly trained operators can work the missile system, and this is a key suspect. Igor Gherkin, nicknamed Strelkov, which means shooter. Hours after the disaster, the former intelligence officer reportedly wrote on a Russian social media site, we did warn you, do not fly in our sky. It probably had to be Russian insurgents. Now, how we determine that will require some forensics. This is a mistake, and therefore more likely to have been 
a Ukrainian separatist shootdown with modern equipment that they didn't understand. Vladimir Putin denies Russia is the source of the weapons, saying it's Ukraine's responsibility. Some media outlets have their doubts. Alex Hart, 7 News. U.S. intelligence agencies have closely monitored Ukraine at its borders since February. That's when pro-Russian separatists began a violent push for control of cities in the country's east, which has so far cost more than 1,000 lives. This is the moment Barack Obama called the Ukrainian president to seek answers. But it was during an earlier phone call to Vladimir Putin when the Russian president first told him MH17 had crashed in Ukraine. It looks like it may be a terrible tragedy. That wasn't the entire story. Apparently uh, had been shot down. Shot down, not an accident. Blown out of the sky. U.S. spy agencies had already stepped up efforts to monitor communications among rebel units. Just this week, America announced new sanctions against Moscow, citing surveillance showing new Russian shipments of increasingly sophisticated weapons to separatists. So concerned about the danger, U.S. airlines stopped flying over eastern Ukraine from April. If a direct Russian connection can be found linking it to the weapon system used to shoot down down MH17, it would ignite the biggest diplomatic crisis since the end of the Cold War. It's important we get to the bottom of this sooner or later because of the possible repercussions that can flow from this beyond the tragic loss of life. I think there's going to be hell to pay and there should be. The biggest question is, who will pay for this? In the United States, Mike A. Moore, 7 News. And here in Perth, a Russian security expert is questioning why MH17 was allowed to fly over the war zone at all. Alexei Murovev from Curtin University says the recent downing of military aircraft in the area should have been a warning. Graham Butler reports. What up until now seemed to be an isolated conflict, a civil conflict between uh, the two uh, warring uh, parties has now become a, an international matter. The Ukraine, a big nation with an even bigger crisis. It's a civil war between uh, central authorities in Kyiv who want to keep Ukraine a, a, an integrated state and, and uh, those separatist forces predominantly uh, uh, manned by uh, Russian-speaking Ukrainians or ethnic Russians living in Ukraine plus volunteers who arrived from Russia to join the fight. Uh, who are fighting for their independence or secession from Ukraine. Alexei Murovev is a Russian-born international relations expert from Curtin University. To me, it's, an it's, a, it's a demonstration of the further escalation of the conflict as well as um, uh, the sophistication of, of, of the violence because so far the rebels managed to successfully repel airborne attacks launched by the Ukrainian military, but they were uh, uh, engage in aircraft flying low altitude missions. And if the rebels are behind this attack, that means that they have a quiet capability, which is far more significant in, uh, if it uh, allowed to reach target at an altitude of 10,000 meters. According to Alexei, the downing of MH17 represents a frightening development. He wants to know why the Malaysian airliner was given clearance to fly over a known war zone where planes had been recently shot down. According to various reports, the rebels shot down up to four uh, Ukrainian military aircraft. One of them, AN-26, which is a military transport aircraft, was down from an altitude of about 6,000 meters. So clearly it was a war zone and civilian aircraft shouldn't be using even high altitude echelons to fly over this um, uh, over this area in the first place. The release of apparent intercepted communications suggest it's most likely a tragic case of mistaken identity. If it was a critical area of judgment, there is no excuse for that. If it was a deliberate attack, uh, that means it's, uh, it's even worse. While the investigation will now try to uncover exactly what happened, a conflict a world away has now claimed innocent Australian lives. It's an unspeakable tragedy and the fact that Australians died on, on board this aircraft obviously makes it even more personal.
A tragic day for Australia and the world. We'll have more on the MH17 disaster shortly, but next, ceasefire over. Israeli troops sent into Gaza as the Middle East crisis escalates. And why Perth's new stadium has triggered anger.